So my goal is to um, review a bunch of gas law problems and um, discuss which laws to use, whether it be Charles, Boyle's, Gay-Lussac's, Avogadro's, or the combined gas law. Okay, so uh, let's work through some of these gas law problems. Please read this problem to yourself. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to, um, on top of each one of these um, in information that is given, I like to write what measurements they are. So ML, of course, is volume. Um, tor is pressure. So let's call this V1 and P1. It asks, um, what will be the new volume? So let's call this V2. That's what we're trying to find. At standard pressure. So we have to think back to class, right? STP, or standard temperature and volume, means that the temperature is going to be uh, 273 Kelvin. And the pressure can be any one of these. Now all of these turn out to be the exact same thing, just that the units are different, therefore the numbers are different. Okay, so we're going to choose one of these based on what um, measurement for pressure is given in the problem. So the best one is to choose TOR. Okay, so let's list all of the um, information that is given. P1, V1. P2, V2. So, so we said that P1 will be 389 tor, and V1 will be 151 ml, which stands for milliliter. P2 is the standard pressure. We're going to choose 760 tor to match this tor. If it doesn't match, then this, then, then this doesn't work. We always have to convert to the same units. So V2 is what we're trying to find. Okay, so here we're just going to deal with pressure and volume, which is going to turn out to be Boyle's Law. Okay, so... Um, Boyle's law has a inverse relationship. So as the pressure, we uh, we can see that the pressure increases from 389 to 760. So as the pressure increases, if the relationship is inverse, then we expect the volume to decrease. Okay, that's a real good way to check to see if our math is right and we um, set the problem up. So, let's work this out. Boyle's law is P1, V1 equals P2, V2. We're trying to solve for V2. So, to get V2 by itself, we'll divide both sides by P2. So, now the P2 will cancel. Okay, so now let's plug in P1 and V1 and P2. P1 is 389 tor. Uh, V1 is 151 ml. Divide by P2, which is 760 tor. This will leave you with V2. So V2 will be in ML because that's the one that is left. That's the one measurement that doesn't cancel. Okay, so uh, we'll plug this into our calculator and the answer will be 77.3. Uh, since both of these are three sig fig, I'm, I'm going to keep this in uh, three sig figs also. 
and we'll circle our answer. 77.3 ml of H2 gas. Alright, so let's check our work. We, we said that if the pressure increases, we expect our volume to decrease. And uh, 77.3 is less than 151 ml. So that's great. Okay, let's move on to problem two. Please read problem two to yourself. All right, so same thing. Let's uh, mark this problem up. A sample of gas whose volume is 282 Kelvin, so that is the temperature. Let's call this T1. And three, 336 milliliter, of course, is going to be volume one. Now, it says that the pressure is constant so that doesn't change we're not worried about the pressure because it it doesn't change until the volume becomes uh, 555 ml so this is V2 so we're trying to find what the final temperature is in degrees Celsius so we're trying to find T2 okay so let's write down all of the given on the left here so that it's easier to see. Uh, T1 equals 282 Kelvin. V1 is 336 ml. V2 is 555 ml and T2 is what we're trying to find. Okay, so I can see here that if um, the pressure stays constant and so does the moles, then we're dealing with Charles Law. Charles. Okay, so for Charles Law, we have a direct relationship between temperature and volume. So I can see here that the vol volume is going to increase therefore the temperature has to increase too. So my T2 should be a bigger temperature than 282 Kelvin. So uh, let's see if we can get that. So Charles Law is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We're trying to solve for T2. So if I want to isolate for T2, I will multiply both sides by T2 so that the T2s will cancel. And now I have my T2 on top. Okay, you can't solve for T2 unless it's on top. So now I want to isolate T2 to get it by itself. right? So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So T1, V1. Uh, what I do on the left, I have to do on the right. So multiply by T1, divide by V1. And now the T1 and V1 cancels from the left side. And I'm left with this. So T2 equals V2, T1 over V1. All right, so now I'm basically home free, right? I just need to plug in all of the different measurements for V2, T1, and V1. T1 is 282 Kelvin. V1 is 336 ml. This equals T2. 
Okay. So I um, I'm going to plug this in, and my answer will be 466 Kelvin. Since all these are three sig figs, I'm going to keep my answer to 466 Kelvin. Okay. But now it says, hey, I want my um, temperature in Celsius. So if I take 466 Kelvin subtracted by 273, I will get my temperature in degrees Celsius, which turns out to be 193 degrees Celsius. So, um, 193 degrees Celsius is the same thing as 466 Kelvin, right? Which is higher than T1, and that's what we want. We want the, uh, since, since the volume increase, we also want the temperature to increase. All right, uh, let's move on to problem three. Please read this problem to yourself. Okay, so the temperature of a gas in a container is decreased from, so we'll, we'll call this T1, and we'll call this T2. At the new temperature, it exerts a pressure, so let's call this P2, right? Because it says, at the new temperature, so at T2, it exerts a pressure of P2, 462 torr. What was P1? Okay, what was P1? Alright, so let's write this down. P1 is what we're trying to find. T1 is 42 degrees Celsius. Now, we, we can't solve um, gas law problems if we keep the temperature in Celsius. So we always have to convert it into Kelvin. So plus 273 gives you 315 Kelvin. P2, P2 is 462 torr. T2 is negative 11 degrees Celsius plus 273 to convert that into Kelvin. So this turns out to be 262 Kelvin. Okay, so I can see here that if we uh, are just dealing with pressure and temperature, this has to be Gay-Lussac's law. Okay, and his law, like Charles' law, shows a direct pro pro uh, proportion between pressure and temperature. So we can see that as the temperature. Oh, I meant to write a T there. As the temperature D uh, is, is going to decrease, the pressure is also going to decrease because this is going to be a directly proportional relationship. Okay? All right, so let's work this out. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. We're trying to isolate for P1. So all that we need to do is to multiply both sides by T1. T1 will cancel, and we're left with this. So P1 equals P2, T1 over T2. All right, so P2 is 400 462. 462 torr. T1 is 315 K. 
Kelvin. We'll divide by T2. T2 is 262 Kelvin. All right. Uh, P2, T1, and T2. Okay, cool. So 462 times 315 equals divided by 262. This will give us P1 is 555. 555, what, what is the one thing that does not cancel? It will be the tour. Okay. So let's check our work here. So we said that since the temperature is going to decrease we expect the pressure to decrease too. So P1 has to be larger than P2 for the pressure to decrease, which it is, because 555 torr is bigger than 462 torr. All right, let's move on to problem four here. Please read problem four to yourself. So let's mark up problem four. Uh, two samples of finishing gas. Sample one contains 3.36 mole of N2. Okay, so that's mole. And the volume is 14.7 at 33 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So this is uh, T1 and this is P1. Sample 2 has a volume of 16.5, so this is V2. Now we can look back and see that it's the exact same temperature, so that means that temperature stays constant. So I'm not going to worry about that. Okay? And I can see that the pressure stays constant too. So it's going to ask us to calculate the new moles of sample 2. So we're trying to find N2. OK, so I know that um, temperature and pressure are mentioned, but it's constant. So I'm going to write that here, constant temperature and pressure, right? So this is going to be um, of Avogadro's law where V1 is 14.7 N1 is 3.36 mole V2 is 16.5 and N2 is what we're trying to find. Okay, so uh, this is of Avogadro. Right? So um, this is also going to be a direct relationship. So we can see here that as the volume increases from 14.7 to 16.5, uh, we are, we're going to expect the moles to also increase. Okay, so let's uh, see if our math proves out to be right. Okay, so Av Avogadro's law is V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. We're trying to isolate N2. Okay, you can't solve for N2 if it's on the bottom. So we're going to multiply it by both sides to bring it to the top. Okay, now we have to we we have to isolate N2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 
uh, N1, V1, which is the reciprocal, and this side by N1, V1, So you're left with N2 equals V2 N1 over V1. Okay, so now let's plug in all of the numbers. V2 is 16.5. N1 is 3.36. mole and then V1 V1 is 14.7 okay so the L's will cancel and you're left with mole and 2 will, will be 3.77 mole mole of nitrogen gas, which is di uh, diatomic, so it's N2. Okay, so let's check our work. We said that we are going to expect the um, N2 to increase since the volume increased. And yes, 3.77 is bigger than 3.36. So that checks out. Okay, so on to the last problem of the day here. Please read this problem to yourself. Okay, so let's mark this problem up. A sample of gas has a pressure of, so this is P1, and the temperature is T1. 5.51 L is V1. If the pressure is raised to 5 atmosphere, so this is P2, and the volume is going to increase to this, so that's V2, 10.68 L, then what is the new temperature? Okay, that's what we're trying to find, new temperature, T2. All right, so let's... Um, fill in all of the measurements that we have. P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, T2. P1 will be 0 0.980 atmosphere. Uh, V1 is 5.51 liters. T1 is 21 degrees Celsius, but we'll convert that into Kelvin, so plus 273 equals 294 Kelvin. P2 will be 5 atmosphere. V2 is 10.68 L, and we're trying to find T2. Okay. So this one's a bit different from the rest because we don't have two terms. We're dealing with three. Pressure, volume, and temperature, right? So this will be the combined gas law. Okay. So let's work this out. Uh, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. We're trying to solve for T2. If you solve for T2, you have to bring it to the top. You can't solve for 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 um, T2 when it's on the bottom. So we'll bring T2 to the top. What you do to the right, you have to do to the, to the left. Cross out T2. Now, we're trying to isolate T2. to uh, um, So we're going to to uh, mul multiply by the reciprocal, P1, V1, and T1 on top. So what you do to the left, you have to do to the right, T1, right? And then uh, P1, V1 on the bottom. So all of these will cancel, P1, V1, 
and T1, and you're now left with T2, right? All of the rest of them canceled. And what you have left on this side is P2 on top, V2 on top, T1 on top, over P1 and V1. Okay. So now uh, we're going to fill in all of the numbers for these terms. P2 is 5.00 atmosphere. V2 is 10.68 liter. Uh, T1 is 294 Kelvin. P1 is 0 0.980 atmosphere. And um, V1 is 5.51. Now, when you plug this into your calculator, since you have two terms on the bottom, what I would do is I would put it into the parentheses like that. Okay? And then here, I would mul uh, multiply them. So actu actually, you just have one parentheses like this. So here's how I would plug this in. I would take 5 times 10.68 times 294, hit enter. Then I would hit divide. Uh, open the parentheses. 0 0.98 times 5.51. And then you would close the parentheses that you group the terms on the bottom then hit enter and your answer should be T2 equals 2,907 um, Kelvin and we want this to 3 sig figs so this is going to round to 2,910 Kelvin okay now some of your teachers, since the um, temperature was given in Celsius, they want you to convert it back to Celsius, right? So all that we have to do is take uh, 200, I'm sorry, 2,910 Kelvin, subtract by 273 to get the uh, degrees Celsius. So degrees Celsius will be. 2,637 degrees Celsius. All right. So now I have a list of problems that you can try on your own. Please pause here and try these. All right. So here are all of the answers to the prompts. Here's problem six. Problem seven. Problem eight. I know I'm going a bit fast, but you can pause this as we go. Problem nine. And here's the last prompt, prompt 10. All right, good luck. Thanks for watching.